Happy Monday afternoon. So the Lord has put something on my heart today and it is a scripture and it just keeps playing in my mind over and over and over and I don't know where this is going to go but I'm going to let the Lord take it and it is John 12 23 and the only Bible that I have with me in the car right now is the NIV version. It says um, Jesus replied the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And this is the verse. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. So I was thinking about this one today, and it just kept going over and over and over in my mind. And I'm like, wow, you know, I like to garden. So when a seed is put in the ground, it does die. But if you nurture it, and it gets sun, and it gets water it grows right and it multiplies and it produces a great harvest so I was thinking in the word in John 1 4 and 5 it says in him was life and that life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it so Jesus is the light right that seed is us and we have to die but he nurtures us he is our light and there's also another one that he led me to John 8 12 I believe 8 12 then Jesus spoke again to the people and said I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have light of life and he also said, Hold on. but Jesus is also, he is the light. And it also speaks of him being the living water, right? So Jesus is what makes us grow. He is what produces the fruit in us, right? We never do anything on our own. It's his righteousness. It's his love. It's everything that he puts in us that nurtures us, that brings any harvest whatsoever. We can never do it. We're just willing vessels. We're available. And the things that he's calling us to, it may seem a little scary, because I know I've been dealing with this right now, that he is calling me to something, and it's like, I know that it's in there, and I feel it. But I'm like, God, I don't know how to do what you're telling me to do. I am unqualified for what you're calling me to do. But he doesn't want the qualified. He wants those of us who say, God, I am willing. I am willing to die. I am willing to lay down my life. I'm willing to give up my selfish desires, the things I want or used to want in this world. God, I will give them up for you. God, nurture me. Nurture me with your word. Get in his word. God, show me your light. And that comes through intimacy in prayer in prayer time and I had been having a time again struggling with my self-discipline as far as spending time with him and I could tell my life started feeling just uneven and unbalanced again so that self-discipline has to come in because God will give us things but we have to make that time for him we have to push in when every distraction starts coming at us when we go to read the word when we go to pray we're the ones who have to say no, 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 no. I am going to get in the word because I need this. I am going to spend time in prayer with Jesus because I need this. That is what nurtures me. That is what keeps me grounded. That is what brings me closer to my Lord, to my Savior. And you'll notice the more that you spend time with him, the more he opens your spiritual eyes. So then it's not a question anymore of if God is real, 
because God shows you very much he is real. The supernatural things that he starts showing you, that you start feeling, that he reveals to you. Everyone is different. Some of us have very, very supernatural experiences with God. And some, it's faith. And he lets that faith grow. And I think it's very important today, this word. Um, because we must die. And that, and that is so hard when we're used to living in this world where it's me, 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 all about me, all about me, to die to me. God, rid me of me so you can use me for your glory, for your kingdom. God, rid me of all of these things and desires of this world, Father, and fill me with your desires, Lord. Put more of you in me, Father, that you would shine through me, Lord. And I pray, Father, whoever this video is for, because he has put it on my heart to send it out there, he will help you. When you make that decision, you say, God, I will do the hard things, but you can do the impossible in me. And he will do it. I am living proof. I used to think I was so weak. I had no self-discipline. I was an addict. I have done all kind of just crazy stuff. I am literally a walking miracle. I should not be alive. Several times I should not be alive. I should not be here. But God has breathed new life into me. He has given me abundant life. And whoever this one is, he wants to give you abundant life too. And he will. I, I guarantee it. He will say, Lord, I am willing, but I need you to rid me of me. You must die. You must die and let him live because we have to get rid of this worldly and the things that we depend on being self-reliant, self-independent, self-righteous, prideful, um, selfish. You got to let all that go. You got to let it all go and trust and have faith. And then there's those ones like me of, well, I need to know. Like, I'm, I was a very factual person. You know, I wanted the facts to be able to see something, to touch it, to feel it. Just have faith. I can guarantee you that the Lord Jesus Christ is real. He has shown me several times. He has touched me. He has healed my body. I had COVID and I just had surgery and then I got COVID. And once I started healing from or got over COVID so I could go back out in public, we had a baptism service at my church and it was, um, the Lord laid it on the pastor's heart to do a healing. Like God is doing things through baptism, um, healing people, filling people with the Holy Spirit so we did that at church and I'm going to go ahead and give my testimony on this. So as I'm walking up, like I was one of the last people, the first to the last person to go up and I had just been praying for every other person who had went up. You know, there was people who had serious needs. Mine didn't seem so big at all. And I don't really like it in prayer too much. I always feel like my things aren't big enough that there's other people that need stuff more than I do so I really I just I guess I try to take on and deal with my own stuff sometimes I know God can but I always think I'm not my issues aren't that important but God loves all of his children we're all equally important to him he's no respecter of persons we're his children and he loves us nothing that we can do but what Jesus Christ did so anyway I'm praying and praying and praying for every person going up right and then when I start to go up, I just felt, because I had been, whew, I had been sick. My body was just run down. Spiritually, I was just run down. But I felt something come over me. And when I walked up, the pastor said, whew, the Holy Spirit's all over you. And I could feel it. And I got in the tub, and all I could do was cry. And I had a pastor on each side of me praying. And all of the sudden, with my eyes closed, I saw the most beautiful, pure light come in that tub with me. Whew, and when it did, it oh, he covered me with the oil of joy. And I hadn't felt that in a long time. And when he did, like they had pictures. And you could literally see on me when Jesus came and brought the oil of joy on me and it was 
amazing. It was amazing. Yes, I got physical healing, but I got spiritual healing too. So Jesus can do it if you ask him. If you need prayer, leave a message. I don't care. Anytime, day or night, leave a message down below. Down below. And I will pray for you. I am a serious, serious, serious believer in prayer because I am a product of my mom and my grandmother's prayer. If you need prayer, I will pray for you. Reach out because there are brothers and sisters who love you, who know what you're going through, who have been there. And if we don't, it doesn't matter. We can still pray for you. We still love you. It doesn't matter what you're struggling with right now. You are not alone. Jesus is with you, but you have brothers and sisters out here who will pray for you, who will talk to you, who will encourage you, uplift you, edify you if you need that. So I'm going to pray right now before I go. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray for the one that you have put on my heart, Father. The one that is hearing my voice right now, Lord Jesus. If this just touches one for you, Father, I pray for that one, Lord. Father, touch their mind, touch their body, touch their heart, their spirit, Father. Lord Jesus, I just pray for you to touch them, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, Father. I just pray for healing, Lord, spiritual healing, Father in their mind, Lord Jesus. I rebuke every lie of the enemy right now, Father. All the lies that's trying to come in and deceive this person right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke every lie of the devil, Father. And Lord, I just ask that you replace it with your promises, with your word, Lord. The words that we can stand on. The words that are truth. Father, I just pray, God, that you just bless them, Father. Let your face shine on them, Father. I pray for favor in their life, abundance, not just financial abundance. I do pray for that, but more spiritual abundance, Lord. Life more abundant as you have promised, Lord. Father, I just love you. I praise you, Father. I just give you honor and glory, Father, in the highest. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ.